This is a full review and user experience of Samsung Galaxy A53 5G after six months. Hi everyone, this is JD, your gadget review friend. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, welcome back to Gadget Rev now. If you're enjoying this channel, don't forget to subscribe. I had this phone when it was first released, I unboxed it, compared it, and really get a good grasp of what this phone can offer instead of using it for a few days and making a quick review out of it. We tested this phone a lot. I should admit Samsung is doing a great job on their mid-range series and trying to dominate the mid-range market. I know there's a lot of Chinese flagship killers out there in the market that would easily dethrone this phone, but we're looking at the brand name, the quality, the support, the multiple years of updates, and the Samsung experience. So today, let's talk about the good, the bad, and our verdict. First, let's talk about the good thing about this phone. The first good thing about this phone is the software support. I know Chinese flagship killers will throw you the best hardware. Most of them are MediaTek processor and some are Snapdragon. Great! But how many updates you will receive from them? After a year or two, your phone will be left out and outdated because these phones from Samsung, Apple, and Google Pixel are still updating. The Samsung Galaxy A53 5G will receive 4 years of major OS upgrade, which means it will receive Android 16. I remember my old Pixel 3 XL only has 3 years of software support, but the new Samsung phones will now receive longer updates. Expensive for sure, but this phone is supported. The next good thing about this phone is the Samsung experience, the UI, the performance, and the day-to-day -day use. Do you know, and I'm not badmouthing the phone, I mentioned this in some of my comments, the flagship killer POCO F3 has a buggy mobile data connection. It drops me from time to time. Also, there are some reported issue of Ghost Touch, for instance. When you play Mobile Legends, it will not register your strokes, and it will affect your game for sure. This phone will not give you the best graphics performance, but this phone is reliable. The next good thing about this phone is the AMOLED screen. Samsung creates the best LED panel for smartphones, and this phone is not an exception. The colors are punchy and it's deep blacks. It has 120Hz refresh rate, which is awesome and can go as high as 800 nits, which is super bright. Not on the level of the Samsung S series, but in reality, you won't see much of a difference. You will enjoy it. The next good thing about this phone is the stylish design. They say if ain't broke, don't fix it. Most mid-range phones look either plain or downright ugly, but Samsung has made an effort to make this look good. It borrowed the look from last year. Samsung embraces the material with a smooth matte finish that curves up to meet the rear camera module. It looks like the phone I reviewed from last month, the Oppo Find X5 Pro. In front you will see the familiar Samsung look and although the bezels are not as slim as the flagship, believe me, it's hard to notice. The next good thing about this phone is the IP67 water and dust resistance. This is a level of protection that not even a flagship phone guarantees, and it's really rare at this price. If you want peace of mind when you're on your phone in the bath or rain, this is one of the few Android phones that offers it. And while the rear is plastic, the front has Gorilla Glass 5, which should add a level of security from drops and scratches too. The next good thing about this phone is the great battery life. The Samsung Galaxy A53 impresses on pure battery life with a generous 5000 mAh cell. I found that the phone will last a full day. A light user will probably stretch this for two. In my case, I found that the battery is often above 40 to 50% by the time I get to bed and it's happy to deliver several hours of screen on time during the day. And the last good thing about this phone is the camera performance. Samsung has essentially left the camera setup unchanged from the A52 and A52s, though with so much of modern smartphone photography handled computationally, the change in the chipset could still have an impact on photo quality. There's no real cause for concerns though, the main 64 megapixel camera is capable of really bright, punchy shots in good light. Just so you know, my brother-in-law is using this phone to vlog, this is a really good camera phone. The image and video quality certainly drops when it gets dark, and this is where the flagship phones pull apart from the pack, but I'd be surprised to see many phones at this price range do much better than A53 has. This is not the best camera phone in low light, but it will deliver. Now let's talk about the bad. The first thing on the list is the sluggish performance. Before we get to the specification, this is my user experience. I feel some hiccups here and there when playing highly intensive games. This phone is slow compared to some flagship killers whether you're using an app or trying to multitask. The RAM seems to be the main issue despite the higher tier of 6 to 8 gigs of memory. The phone struggles to keep multiple apps running at once and at times it froze when I'm just using Facebook. 
Instead of going for a mid-range Qualcomm processor, Samsung has opted to use its own Exynos 1280 chipset. This is not a good idea, there's also a 4GB variant of this phone that will suck out the patience out of you. The next bad thing about this phone is the slow charging. Charging is less exciting but that's true for Samsung most expensive phones like Samsung S22 and the same thing can be said here. Wire charging is limited to 25 watts. It's slow by modern Android standards, even the cheap ones. I know the new Poco F4 is 67 watts, so almost 3 times as fast as this one. The next bad thing about this phone is still under the discussion of charging, the snow charger block. So I did an unboxing of this phone and you only have the manual, SIM ejector tool, and the cable. Either you buy a separate charger or you use the old ones. By the way, I reviewed a lot of fast chargers on this channel, so make sure to check the phone accessory series. The next bad thing about this phone is the removal of the headphone jack. So if you're still using the wired headphones, you need to buy a dongle or move to the wireless Bluetooth headphones. It sucks, right? And the last bad thing about this phone is, it has a plastic back. I expect that Samsung will put a cheap plastic back the same as the previous A-series. So you need to buy a case for this phone or it will look really ugly fast because of scratches. So there are certainly pros and cons of buying this phone. So what is Gadget Revnow's verdict? Samsung Galaxy A53 5G after 6 months. There are no surprises for me after using it for 6 months. I think it has a fair share of good and bad things. I will not recommend this to gamers if you need some solid gameplays without interruption. The Exynos 1280 isn't the best partner for One UI 4. It's a bit sluggish but alright, you'll survive. Also don't sell your charging block or you might find yourself buying one again. And I will recommend this to anyone who has 500 Canadian dollars or less, depending on the discount. This phone is reliable, will receive longer software updates, and has decent cameras for your shooting needs. This full review, revisiting after 6 months, will all boils down to what you need. If the good outweighs the bad, go for it. If not, skip it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll continue to compare this phone in our channel, so stay tuned. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.